The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw Dating, preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now your host, Nicole Hutchison. Welcome into Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys in the SWBC studio. I got all my girls with me, Aisha Morrison, Jess Navarez, and Jazz Monet. I'm Nicole Hutchison. Ladies, it's Chris- not Christmas Eve. It is game. <laughs> Lord. What? Wow. You the we second, really missed a few months there. Nah, you the second person and brought up Christmas. And, <laughs> and low-key, it's going to be here before Listen, you know it. No. Nah. Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your pocketbook. Hide your wife is crazy. <laughs> that you, is insane if work. You, if you go out to the stores right now, it's not even Halloween out anymore. It's <laughs> work? Ho- it, no, it's uh, really? Christmas. Yeah. It is true, because they got the lights about uh-huh. to be put up in uh, And the, the trees and everything. It's about to be fall. I it's love already fall. fall. It's I officially fall. fall. It doesn't. Well, today of course felt you like know, fall. The, the date. Okay, it is. Fall. No, yes, it wasn't two days ago. It was the first day of uh, fall. September twenty first was the first day of fall. Uh, huh. Interesting. All right, well, a few days ago. What I meant off. to say was it is game eve. It is. It's game day eve. Not yes. to be mistaken with Christmas eve. That part. <laughs> the Cowboys get ready to take on the New York Giants at seven fifteen p.m. on Thursday. Whoa. Central. Yeah. Central mm-hmm. time. Make sure to. Tune in. But anyways, uh, ladies, when you talk about, well, not when you talk about, there seems to be a lot of, what's it called, the meme, the little Spider-Man meme? This one. The finger pointing? The finger pointing. Yeah. A whole lot of blaming going around uh, for this one and two start for the Dallas Cowboys. You're seeing fans frustrating, frustrated, um, people saying that it's Maybe a little bit on Jerry Jones. Maybe it's on Mike McCarthy. Players are saying that there's just a lack of detail um, that they're taking on when it comes down to game time. I want to ask you all this. Who is really to blame for this one and two start? I'm going to start with Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> so, honestly, there's there's blame that can go around to everybody. Mm-hmm. So, we've heard people blame Jerry Jones. We've heard blame put be put on Mike McCarthy. We've heard people blame uh, Zimmer. We've heard blame uh, of the players. We've heard the players, in so many words, blame each other. And none of those people are necessarily wrong. But it's like, if you really want to get down to the nitty-gritty in terms of who's most responsible or what can be done now... I do, I'm inclined to say that it falls on the players right now, mainly because so many of the players are pointing to each other and to other guys in the locker room. I mean, there's been a a tiny bit of expression of like, okay, X, Y, Z about the coaches, yada, 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 but not a lot. Most of what we're hearing is these players saying, okay, if guys would just do their jobs, if they would just step up in these ways. And even when you start like really looking at the games and breaking down the games, you can see that there are ways that despite how people might feel about personnel and about scheme, there are things that players aren't doing well. We've seen the missed tackles. We saw in the Saints game uh, uh, defensive tackles chasing the gaps and popping up out of their stands to get and push around. We saw the misalignment. Heck, Osa, I don't know what words I can say. Heck, um, yeah. but Osa talked to us yesterday about the misalignment in the Ravens game. Mm-hmm. And then on the offensive side, we've seen running backs taking the wrong holes. We've seen like poor execution of blocking on the offensive line, like just this whole trap thing that they just can't seem to get right, you know? So we we have seen instances of players not getting it right and how you, you could see how if they were to get it a little better, that things might go better and that does seem to be the consensus among them so i'm like well i'm just gonna go with what they're saying because they're right there experiencing it now personally i do also agree with the people who say that there are some scheme issues but like i said the players are saying it's the players so i'm gonna go with that that was good that was good i was like the soapbox was right there and that was great i want to jump on that soapbox too here's a soapbox thank you i'm crying all right <clears throat> oh gosh it goes everywhere The blame goes, you said it, it goes everywhere. It goes to players, it goes to coaches, it goes to ownership, it goes all the way up the ladder, it goes all the way around. It's a domino effect that you go back to even last year started. Because guess what you could have done last year? You could have signed Dak Prescott, which would have avoided an entire 
I guess, plethora of issues that came down to lack of depth in certain positions that you knew needed it. It came down to not being able to retain guys that could have helped this locker room. And then that made the dominoes fall because then you're relying on draft. Great. Draft and develop. That sounds fantastic until you realize it really takes a couple of years for these guys to develop in the positions they're expected to, to develop in. So then, OK, you're putting all of this pressure on this rookie class. Well, guess what? They're still rookies. No matter what, they are still rookies learning an NFL playbook, which I will always give them grace for. OK, you have that issue. Well, then <laughs> that trickles down into every single part of your game and guess what it's the same parts that you've been saying over and over and over your downfalls run game run defense i have to blame that on coaching as well i have to blame that on scheme because some of the personnel that is in these positions now we're not here before and yet you have the same issues so for me it goes all the way around starting from the top all the way back down to the bottom everybody kind of needs to get it together come to a consensus of hey this is what it is. This is the position we're in. Now we need to do our jobs. And that goes all the way around for everybody. Play the play the ball that you are learning to play. Learn your playbook. Do your work outside of it. Uh, I, I do know there was some kind of emphasis, uh, especially for, from the veteran players, of the guys not doing work outside, uh, being a professional and, you know, doing their job. So study a little harder, do a little more, want it a little more. I mean, heck, if you want to win – Show it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm going to say it goes all the way around from top to bottom. There's blame for pretty much everybody. Um, so that's that's my soapbox. Here you go. <laughs> Here's yours. Oh, Ugh. Ooh, you are she got teary eyed. I was, I was like, I'm going to add to my. Oh, go ahead. No, oh, I'm here just you making sure she's go. okay. I'm going to add to, to mine while. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Do you need okay. water? No, I'm good. I have plenty of this. I have thing in my right eye. Here. Oh, okay. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just going to add to mine while while you were fixing your, your eye. But I do agree that a lot of it has to do with scheme because, like, as you were talking, I was thinking about the fact that when it comes to scheme, like, so players are kind of programmed to blame themselves anyway because yeah, they're programmed yeah. to, like, you know, control the controllables. We hear phrases like that a lot. So yeah. they're going to be inclined to be like, well, this is what I could do better. This is what, you know, the people in my position could do better. But, like, when it comes to scheme, a good scheme – should make it easier for guys to Absolutely. make decisions quickly and play fast yeah, without absolutely. having to think so hard. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing that it does kind of feel like they're all having to think really hard mm -hmm. and everything does feel difficult. And <laughs> I see it because I'm looking at it from a different perspective and I almost don't even expect any of them to admit that, yeah, this is like really taxing mentally. Like this scheme feels stressful. Yeah, <laughs> which yeah. is crazy because they won't. I feel like in the off season they when they brought in Zimmer, I'll speak on what I've been told defensively. They loved the scheme. They were excited about it, and they felt like it was something that was simple. So mm -hmm. it, now it's kind of showing a whole different side of where it's like maybe it is a little different. You know what I'm saying? Like I will say, I, I never heard them say simple. I think they believed it would be effective. Did they, I did they say simple? was told simple, okay. and I was told that was it was something it. that they were excited about. So that's why I'm kind of confused on, hmm, well, then why is it not working? Honestly, if... when I talk about a complicated scheme that makes them think hard, I am thinking more <laughs> about the offense and about the defense. So I agree. Well, maybe well, maybe yeah, Zim yeah. is making it simple. I agree there, but to answer your question, yeah. as far as who gets the blame, I think everything y'all said is valid. Uh, you can only um, – <laughs> Scheme and stuff can only, like, fix so much. And when you talk about specifically on the defensive side of the ball, the negligence, that is the DT position. And what we have experienced with that and the fact that they just did not address that position in the off season, They just acted – Hankins left, mm. and they just acted like it wasn't a, a thing. Detrimental. And to, for this specific defense, this, this scheme, you need DTs – that can hold double teams. Mm -hmm. Yes. You need – because it doesn't matter how good the linebackers are or what else is going on. It doesn't matter how you scheme it. If guys – you know, you hear – like you said, you hear guys talk about, oh, well, we just have to do our job. Well, what if somebody cannot? Yeah. yeah. And that's what's happening. There are people who cannot mm -hmm. do their job. So you're – okay, is that a Mozzie Smith – 
cannot do it. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, to me, the blame would go to the front office Mm, and mm -hmm. they're there. And you talked about the fact that if they would have paid Doc and CD earlier, maybe you could have. And to your point, Jess, that you made about the draft, there are some positions that you, if you're, this team is, as, as much as people don't like it, this team is in, was in a position, I don't know about now, in a position to win now. There are some positions when you talk about DT specifically that, to your point, take time to develop, and you can't rely on uh, you can't rely on young guys to come in and just get it right away with those positions. You have to get veteran tenure in those certain positions. There were some good veteran DTs available this off season. You couldn't pay them because mm-hmm. of how you handled your contracts. So that's number one. Number two, as far as the offense goes, <laughs> you can't run the ball right now. Your offensive line needs to be better. Hear me out. I hear that. But you can't run the ball at all, given what you have going on. And again, the way that they handled the running back position, not conducive for this offense to be better. You talk about, you can, I agree, the, the concepts, passing concepts and stuff are not creative. They're not what you would expect. But we also have to consider where the offensive line is. And a lot of this stuff is not working because you can't run the ball. Mm-hmm. So I. To that, say, this could have been handled better by the front office and the way that they went about attacking um, free agency and things of that nature. They waited too long. Now they're in a position to where they have to work with what they got. And you're right, Jazz. They're not going to. Uh, there's finger pointing, but it's not really finger pointing. They really, I, th- I think they can't say what they really want to say. I think some of them have yeah. said what they really want to say. <laughs> and, 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 uh, I don't think they, I don't yeah. know, really I don't think they exactly can say what they, what they yeah. really want to yeah. say, especially when it comes to uh, on the offensive side of the ball, the yeah, scheme yeah. and yeah. the lack thereof. Because, You're right. But this is a scheme they were under last year. They were under the scheme last but, year. But yeah. you can only do so much with That's your true. run game That's if true. the offensive line isn't holding up. Last year, what I think it was, it was a personnel problem with Tony mm-hmm. Pollard still coming back from a leg injury. Mm-hmm. And the scheme was not <laughs> trying to get the run game going until, what, week 10? And there's things you right? can do like, yeah. late in the season. And yeah. they're not doing things particularly to help with, and th- this is my problem with the offensive line stuff. There are other teams in the NFL that don't have this offensive line, even so just from a name standpoint. And I hear you. I understand Cooper Beebe's a rookie. I understand Tyler Guyton's a rookie, and they're still learning. I understand that Terrence still isn't playing the best football. I feel like we've seen, better, we've seen offensive lines get it done with less. I'm mm-hmm. not sure the play caller is helping fit what you are able to do mm-hmm. um, with this offensive line right now. And so the and lack of run so game, the, it's, these, these are the two things you came out of the playoffs <coughs> saying. We can't run the ball. We can't stop the run. Yep. What did you do in the offseason to make you feel like you could do that? And so the crazy like, thing is, if you were to ask the powers that be, they would probably say, like, oh, well, we did make moves. We brought in this guy. We, we brought in that guy. Tackle. And, we drafted a tackle. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it's like it's it's inadequate, though. And that also makes me wonder, where is the evaluation? Because like you said, yeah. what if some of these guys That's can't do their jobs? Or what if the guys that they're bringing in aren't the guys who they need to get the jobs done that need to be done? But who was it that's saying like, okay, I actually have seen this person execute X, Y, Z, or this is what this person needs to work on. We hear a lot about guys working on these things by themselves in the off season, but when it comes to, okay, who is actually pointing out the shortcomings? Well, but how much can you really do that if you don't have the depth in certain pieces to even like find a solution if they're not adequate enough for that? Well, that's what I'm talking about the off season as well. Like when you're even when you're evaluating the people that you're bringing in and the sense of urgency that that should be applied to these positions. There also is a stubbornness also too with respect, and I I mean it just is what it is. Is like. Cowboys hired, I don't know, remember last year? I don't know if you were here yet. They hired all these analytics people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wasn't here yet. Yes. They've been doing that every year. They are going against analytics. (laughs) And you can tell that in the way they play. And their inability to adapt to the trends of the NFL is what's driving me the most bonkers. Mm, Well, that's Mm. actually funny because remember when, um, I think this was when I came in, and you're starting to see the success of motion and other offenses have success with that. Mm -hmm. Then the Cowboys started implementing that a little bit. So it's like, I feel like we're just behind the eight ball. Always. Always. That's the issue that I have. Always. And my thing, too, is you even go back to last year, 
when, yes, you're still having the same problems, but you were under a different coach, a DC, I should say, uh, back then. And, and what I think was kind of underestimated was what a transition it would be from Dan Quinn to Mike Zimmer oh, for these from guys. From the emotional standpoint from as well. the way that he coaches and how he runs things, it is night and day. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but what I am saying is when you're used to a Dan Quinn who was pretty much like the fun uncle, as we would call him, to the Zimmer that's like... Do what you need to do. You're not going to. Ah, guess what? You don't get snap counts anymore. Like, yeah. I don't care. No excuses. It's a very <laughs> different feeling. And I feel like for them, and I'm not making excuses. I'm just, this is what I've picked up on. It's a very different anxiety that they're playing with, which is why I feel like you're seeing this hero ball uh, topic being brought up so much because they feel like they have to overcompensate and make the big plays to show off. So that way they're not getting punished in ways that they know Zimmer will, which is, hey, you don't want to do anything, sit down then. But so just the opposite I don't feel like Dan me. would do that. Because no, I think the de- I did I I think I think the trickle down effect of the lack of good DT play is killing you. Well, and and only and we said this earlier this week, but just blaming that for the defensive woes, it's it's getting old. It because is. It, I think it's both that. things are true. It yeah. is. That's why I say it yeah. is. But it's, it's, it's the trickle down effect, but it's a trickle down effect that's making people think they have to overcompensate right. and exactly. they end up not doing their jobs because they're in. trying to yeah. overcompensate. Like it starts yeah. there, but then the web continues to grow sure. because of it. Yeah. So it's not just that that's an issue. And I feel like everyone's been so fixated on like DT, DT, DT. It's, it's yes, it's like, important, but like it's trickling into other things things that are just not going well it's, al- it's almost like all these things are like multiple diseases with a common symptom which is like losing that's that's a horrible disease <laughs> i don't want that disease. i don't want that either <laughs> Ooh, let's say that they but take it's, your vitamin it's going C around the that one <laughs> let's say that they fix all these things right let's say they go on a thursday they stop in the run they run in the ball effectively don't drink the cola doing all the things that you know they had nope. struggles with the first three weeks will a win thursday against the giants mean much like with the losses it'll depend on how they win like, with the losses, yeah. we had to kind of look at it, break it down, and be like, okay, what is going on? And I think it's going to be the same thing with the win. A lot of people are predicting the Cowboys will win by somewhere between a field goal and a touchdown. I think the last prediction that I heard from people who do all that number of stuff <laughs> that we're not allowed to do it was five and a half points, right? So um, I it, that, that's what people are expecting. Mm-hmm. Even considering how the Giants have struggled, they're looking at how the Cowboys have struggled and be like, yeah, the mm-hmm. Cowboys will win, but not by much. So if they are able to go out and win by more than that, that might say a little bit of something. Will it be something that I'm like celebrating like, oh, yeah, it went like, no. But if we go out there and we see the defensive line do a little bit better in their alignment, if we see them actually do a little bit better in the run game, I feel like that'll be like, okay, they're trending in this direction. So there's there will still be a lot of questions to be answered regardless. But it's kind of like when you're looking at a stock and you might not know how much money that company is going to make at the end of a quarter but you can look at that line and be like oh is it trending up mm-hmm. or is it trending mm-hmm. down mm-hmm. is it staying flat you know that's, that's what, what i'm going look at to those, be girl. looking for like anxious. where are we improving because like yeah there's areas where this offense is trending down in mm-hmm. ways that we don't normally expect mm-hmm. like we i've gotten so used to saying yeah Dak prescott is great against the blitz Dak prescott is get great at tight window throws that when i started looking at the numbers i was just like Am no. I, is this the bizarre no. world cowboys what's going on they literally statistically do everything better than <laughs> yeah on defense and offense. Yeah. Right. Right now. Right. The Giants. The Giants. So to, yep. Yeah. So. Uh, I, to answer your question, I think it could put you with the starting line to be better. I don't think it necessarily is your end all be all fix because here's the thing about this kind of game too is when I was looking back at everything and you know me former weather forecaster I have to check the weather for this game there's rain in the forecast what does rain game tell me run game mm. so guess what's gonna be tested two of your downfalls on both sides of the ball here mm. so you know what if they win and the run game gets going all is well with that the run defense holds up Cool. You're at the starting line for fixing your problem. Now be consistent with it for the next Honestly, however many weeks. Like yeah. it doesn't solve it, but it shows that they're capable of doing it. And it doesn't matter if it's against the Giants. It doesn't matter who it's against. It's proving to yourself I am capable of overcoming these problems that we have had. Now you just have to continue to find ways to do it against different opponents. Now how this offensive line plays 
Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go oh, ahead. The way that the, the offensive line <laughs> plays against this Giants defensive line will tell you some things. Uh, this Giants defensive line does have some players on it, some talented players on it, and, and how they're able to handle um, them and also deal with some, picking up some of their blitz packages and stuff will be – telling as well and as far as the defense goes like yeah they're not particularly good at running the ball like the Giants but they will and yep. they'll do it in different ways and they also will do some RPO things with uh, Daniel Jones which has given you some trouble obviously in this last couple mm. weeks so it's like you will be able to take some information from the game but they need to me I said it yesterday I think that this this needs to be a confidence building mm. okay we put we put some good film out there we can do certain things like that type of energy. Like they need to just be trying to take some positives from the game. All right, all eyes will be on MetLife Stadium on Thursday night, and we're going to be breaking it all down right here on Girls Talk, Boys Talk. Up next, stick with us here in the SWBC studio on Girls Talk, Boys Talk. We'll be right back. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the Playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola a journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation. So you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today. Dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. The Dickey family always mandated that the only Polish-style sausage worthy of their restaurant must have high-quality coarse ground beef and pork, rich spices, and fresh natural casings. We still serve it to this day, and it's so popular, Dickey Sausage has been named the official sausage of the Dallas Cowboys. The perfect matchup on game day. Dickey's Barbecue Pit. No one outsmokes us. Order at Dickey's.com. For groups, call 866-BARBECUE. Dips on the ribs. Shop at the Star in Frisco on Saturday, September 28th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Flea Styles Market at the Star, presented by Maker Place by Michaels. Turn featuring 50 plus local makers offering art, fashion, home decor, jewelry, and kids' items. Market at the Star is always a favorite. Admission is free, so for more info, visit uh, thestardistrict.com. And it will be there waiting for you. So, yeah, go. I love that. Go. Twitter needs to be deleted. <laughs> Why? It was just. It's a picture of. Oh, it no. Sure it's like, show me how fast you be leaving work, and it's a picture of Shakira Richardson with the American flag. <laughs> Sick. I'm and done. I tried to, I was trying to hold it together. I'm I was done. trying to see if any reports that came out and that came across. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm done. Oh, that hurt me. Ladies. Okay. What concern y'all concerns y'all the most about this Giants defense because they had some success, a lot of success. Oh, we did get the report, the, by the way. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, girl. Sorry. Real fast. Ooh, I can't read this. Oh my goodness. Today. Sorry. Woo, doubtful. Marquise Bell and Kaylin Carson are doubtful. His little Baker. injury report. Mm-hmm. And then uh for your New York Giants. Adoree Jackson, game status is out. Drew Phillips is out. And Darius Slayton is questionable. Mm. So Dexter Lawrence is good. Um, Dang, they threw us some loopholes because yeah. McLeod and Banks were the ones that were yeah. that were yeah. they saying were injured, but now yep. the backups are injured. Backup. Well, yeah. What? Yeah. Y'all trying to play with us? Stop. Thank you. They playing game. Probably. They are playing games Maybe a little so. bit. Cause why would you say that the 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 mm. the, the, the two starters was iffy and now the backups is the ones that's hurt deception mm. disgrace 
They said, do, do Doctor Strange. Y'all didn't watch Lion King too? Mm, no. Girl, I haven't seen that movie in a long Deception. time. Deception. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're on your own, sister. Y'all, you're on your own, kid. Y'all have hurt me. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. sorry <laughs> Even hurt. if the, like Disney adult can't figure it out, that's bad. <laughs> y'all don't know. Y'all didn't watch the Lion King too. Y'all that really soundtrack? As a child. <laughs> No. Jazzy, I know you watched it. I she know did. you watched it. Jazz, did you? No. You watched the Lion King? She said no. She said no. <laughs> I'm ding, 20, ding, ding. I'm 24. I'm a senior of Citizens. Oh, goodness. Oh, my God. Not the geriatric over here. <laughs> All right, ladies, what concerns you the most about this uh, Back in Giants day. defense that you've seen on uh, Sunday <laughs> against the Browns? What do you feel like the big will be the biggest challenge? <laughs> challenge for this Cowboys offense. The biggest challenge will quite literally be Dexter Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> quite literally. He's a big challenge. That's um, a big no, challenge. So, so honestly, the what he's been doing uh, for the rest of the defense combined with some of the unexpected trends of Shane Bowen together is what scares me. Because, like, Dexter Lawrence, like, uh, I hadn't really been paying attention to the Giants on paper. I was like, one pressure, okay. But then I saw that he gets double teamed 56% of the time. Mm -hmm. So that's where a lot of the success of the defense is coming from is the fact that he's demanding so much attention. It's just opening up opportunities for guys to make plays. And so I guess that's what inspired Shane Bowen to just all of a sudden fall in love with the Blitz because yep. why not just put a little bit extra stress on the opposing offensive line? So the fact that they've been blitzing at such a high rate, 43% um, of dropbacks is how often they've been blitzing this season yeah. uh, combined with the fact that um, uh, Dexter Lawrence demands so much attention and our offensive line has already been struggling. Even when they get help sometimes, it doesn't really look that pretty. So that's that's the part that's really got me a little bit concerned uh, when it comes to how they're going to handle it. And when you talk about the interior defense, uh, a little stat for you. <laughs> uh, the Giants' rushing defense has been better on the interior with allowed a 38.2% success rate on design rushes, rushes between the tackles. That's 11th in the NFL compared to a 43.3% on the outside tackles, which is 24th. That's because of hmm. ham over there. Yeah. <laughs> and then our offense, Not they the don't ham. know how to He's attack the edges. So. He's so big. But no, yeah. Um, she made all the yeah. points about the, the defensive line. Uh, but also, too, I mean, just in general, um, it sounds like you just mentioned it's going to be raining. Um, yeah, your inability to run the ball and then being able to, again, they're not amazing stopping the run. In the interior they are. But that's that might be have to be a lot of what you do offensively, um, given what the weather is going to be. But also, too, as far as, um, <coughs> as, far as uh, Burns and Thibodeau, if you do got to pass the ball, I mean, with the way these tackles have played, like, yeah. I'm nervous about uh, these guys are lengthy. They got long arms. They can go speed to power. They got both of them have different tool, tools in their toolbox. Um, I really want Dak to get some time to take advantage of maybe some of the, the deficiencies they have in the secondary. But if you can't block it up, then you can't do it. So. And more than anything, yeah, their defensive line clearly is the strongest unit that they have. Yeah, yes. and what they're going to try to do is trap Dak in the pocket because they know they can't handle him if he starts scrambling. So yeah. what they're going to try to do is minimize that pocket as quickly as possible. Um, something that I think is going kind of under the radar for the Giants is their, um, I guess, efficiency in the red zone. Specifically, they're tied for seventh best. They've allowed 33.3 of their opponents in the red zone to get opportunities to score, which is pretty low. Um, and seeing how the Cowboys have struggled in the red zone these last three weeks now, um, it, it is worrisome because you cannot continue to rely on Brandon Aubrey, especially in a rain game. That's not something that's going to be as clutch as it usually is for you uh, because of your red zone woes. So for me, when I'm looking at this game, I'm looking at – you better get it together in the red zone. And I know it's it's more compact in the red mm -hmm. zone. That's why the issues are there. But, again, you find your red zone target. You're going to have a Jake Ferguson in, which obviously helps you a lot. Uh, hopefully you get this running game going. Ezekiel Elliott, here we go. Zeke in the red zone, nothing new. Uh, but to me, I'm looking at that red zone efficiency for the Cowboys in this game. What would be the best way to attack this Giants defense? Because – you mentioned that the defensive line is obviously the strongest room on that defense. So is this an opportunity for maybe Dak and CD to finally have that chemistry show up on film? Um, the way that I would attack them, I, I think that their linebackers are 
I think their linebackers do well in playing the run and coming downhill. However, mm-hmm. you can do some things with them in coverage. We saw Jake Ferguson have some <laughs> success against even some of the better linebackers in, yeah. in, in NFL. So I, I just think that uh, being able to attack there, I, there still should be opportunities there with McLeod and Banks. Uh, Banks, the corner, uh, Deontay Banks that they have, uh, he's – Dealing with some type of injury, if I'm not mistaken, but I think he's going to go. Was he limited today? I'm sorry. Oh, let me pull um, it up. Uh, yeah, but he's dealing with something. I think we'll see them try to attack there as well. But more than anything, as far as their defensive line goes, is clearly you wouldn't want to run in between the tackles mm. because that's where their success success is. Now, well, they're, what's up? He wasn't Why are the Cowboys the be acting like they don't know how to attack the edges? Like running in between the tackles, like all they do, and it's not, and they're not even no, that good at it. Like, absolutely, why? you're right. And, and but the thing is, also too, I think is because your tackles are not. Maybe they don't have faith. That, maybe they don't have faith that the tackles can get out in space and do the mm. right thing. But it's like, but you can still pull your guards. Like you can yeah. still do those things. So it's like the, the Cowboys do need to figure out ways to run the ball on the move i mean we know i hate to mention screens because they're just non-existent they are ghosts but that is a way that you counter a defensive line like this that is aggressive that is fast um and you kind of try to tire these guys out you know because they get a lot of push and power from chapman (laughs) and lawrence if you can wear those guys down a little bit as the game goes on you should see things open up for you but it's it's contingent on how they decide to run the ball i I would love to see a toss or two you can run at thibodeau he's Mm -hmm. not he's he he'll he won't he'll stop the run but he's not consistent in his ability to stop the run i wouldn't be trying to go see Brian Burns. Well, though. right now they're averaging about five yards on the ground per yeah. carry. Yeah. Uh, the Giants run defenses, and really what they what they struggle with is they have trouble forcing running backs to run on the outside of them because they know they can run right through them. Mm-hmm. So to your point, if you just look them straight in the eye, go mm-hmm. for it. It can actually work in this game. So a Rico Dowdle game uh, couldn't be far off because that seems to kind of be uh, where they're trying to put Rico Dowdle, even a Deuce Vaughn uh, mm-hmm. package or two in there. Something I wanted to mention, too, is <coughs> how much I have noticed the Giants struggling with tackling. That's something that we've talked about on the Cowboys side of the ball a lot. But they have missed 13 tackles over three games, so that's about four per game uh, on average in the run. This is their run defense specifically. They struggle with that. So uh, per PFF, I was say uh, I was uh, reading. Where was this? I lost my notes. I'm not even going to try to say his name. Um, I think it. Spadio. How do you say uh, it? How do you say that name? I practiced it earlier and I can't read my own handwriting. Just spell it. Car Car K. Is that how you say it? Just last name? It. It's fine. I know I didn't spell it right on here. I, I know sure. what you're okay. saying. Anyways, he's he's yeah. your leading missed tackler on the run. So if you run right at him, he's not going to tackle you. You're going to slip right through him. So a guy like Rico, who's a very angry runner anyways, um, yeah. That's, the linebacker? That's kind of where I'm at. Yes. Yeah. That's he can, he's, take, he can take some bad angles. Yeah. He Once you miss, once he misses, you're done. Like, you can pretty much go down. So to me this isn't necessarily about a Dak and CD game it's more about getting your running backs the confidence to continue to get through the rest of the season because they can have a good game at this game you need to run I ball. think variety is going to be the answer um the I wouldn't say it's going to be an opportunity for Dak and CD to have a big game mm-hmm. more like a, a necessity in the sense that when they do connect it's going to be more important for them to actually make those connections <laughs> work so hopefully they worked out whatever kinks were going on last week um but speaking of last week you know a lot of people were looking for positives from what happened late in the game the comeback and I would say one of the best things that happened was that you saw 12 different people get receptions from Dak Prescott which yeah. is good and so Um, I was looking at this particular stat. It said uh, the Cowboys have used eight different offensive groupings this season, tied for second most in the NFL. And I feel like if they can get (laughs) that going, it'll give them some more options and not make defenses feel so comfortable just being like, we're just going to put three people on CeeDee Lamb and then just wait for y'all to make a mistake. Like They're going to have to actually think a little bit more once they know that, hey, we can get multiple people involved. Also, something I thought was interesting – uh, the Cowboys have used zero tight end plays at the second highest rate. One of just two teams to use such personnel uh, on over five plays. Uh, the Cowboys have also used two plus running backs on 18.9% of plays. <coughs> and I'm just like, but the the running backs ain't getting no carry. So like, what are, what are they doing? Yeah. You know? So it's like, you're, you're seeing like 
all these players get snaps. You're seeing running backs out there. They're doing this weird zero tight end thing. And I think it's time to go back to what Mike McCarthy promised us last season, which is play call purpose. So, like, yes, keep getting these people involved, but, like, let's put some purpose behind it. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's going to be the answer not only for this game but moving forward. Yeah, you mentioned the personnel groupings. Um, one thing that I would like to see is a little bit f- more stacked formations. And when I say that, I mean, like, yeah. three linebackers lined up. You know, the linebackers, three receivers yeah. lined up on yeah. one side of the line. Like, cause some conflict, man. You know, this this secondary is still fairly young. So you put them in positions where they have to think, make them have to fight through trash if you can't pass the ball, if the yeah. water, if it's not raining too much. Um, there are things that they can do. Everything that a lot of that they're doing is stagnant, and it's just really relying on these receivers to get open really on yes. their own. Yep. Do some things to kind of get them um, some spacing. Do some things to make guys have to think on the other side of the ball. So it's like that. that's another thing that I'm looking for. But I'll be surprised, though, um, the, the Giants – they, I think it's because of some of the injuries they're dealing with because they've been banged up. Yeah. A lot of the guys have been banged up. They're running a lot of zone. Mm-hmm. They're not trying to run man like that. So yeah. there will be windows there. Yeah. But, again, <laughs> depending on how many people, like, depending on if you can't run the ball, they're going to do the same thing that other people do to you. It doesn't matter. It, yeah. it doesn't matter that they don't have great personnel. It <laughs> still is effective if you're not doing anything to change it mm-hmm. or if you're not doing anything as far as running the ball to make people have to get out of it. Yeah, yeah. you talk about I'm, this. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You talk about the stack formation. That's something that you saw with that Brandon Cooks touchdown week <laughs> one. Um, three wide receivers lined up on the left side. Trips and, left, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that, that I think that would be actually something creative to do. I'm sorry. Go ahead. On that point, um, Thibodeau, who historically does do a lot for the Giants uh, defense, has actually had a quiet season so far. Yeah. And when he was asked about why that was, um, a lot of people uh, – um, a lot of people associate him and Burns together, like as a tandem. And he said that the reason why that wasn't really working out the same way this season was because he was experiencing a lot of chipping and a lot of two-man routes. Oh, that's new, so, huh? That <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, that's, that lets him know he's, he's, he's developing. It is, yeah, it is yeah. to him, at least. So that I thought about that when you were talking about different things the Cowboys could do with their receivers to kind of trip them up a little bit. I'm like, Thibodeau has pretty much said out loud, like, yeah, this is a problem. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, ladies, we're going to take our second break. And up next, we're playing a little game. We okay. love games on here. All right, we'll be right back. Cowboys Nation on Girls Talk, Boys Talk. Presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be right back. The Dickey family always mandated that the only Polish-style sausage worthy of their restaurant must have high-quality coarse ground beef and pork, rich spices, and fresh natural casings. We still serve it to this day, and it's so popular, Dickey's Sausage has been named the official sausage of the Dallas Cowboys. The perfect matchup on game day. Dickey's Barbecue Pit. No one outsmokes us. Order at Dickey's.com. For groups, call 866-BARBECUE. Dips on the ribs. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. A journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. Are you 
the 2024 Dallas Cowboys Fan of the Year, the Dallas Cowboys and Captain Morgan are celebrating extraordinary, inspiring, and original fans. Nominate yourself or the biggest Cowboys fan you know for a chance to be named the 2024 Fan of the Year and win prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year. Go Cowboys. Let's hope the Cowboys are in the Ooh. Super Bowl this year. Okay, that was very. I said it would be dope. (laughs) I just looked at you. I can't look at you. All right, not me gaslighting. Can we get past the next forty-eight hours first? All right, ladies, who you got? I'm gonna give y'all two names, and then y'all decide. Okay, who you got? Malik Neighbors, Trayvon Diggs. Mm. You want to be petty today? (laughs) (laughs) You want to start today? Honestly. Honestly, <laughs> so I'm done making predictions. So this is not a take. Yeah, this is not a not, prediction. This yeah. is just it's funny a, an evaluation of yeah, just games personalities. Oh, go ahead. I really do believe that Trayvon Diggs is kicking himself over like what was essentially one play last week. But like you know, he went on Twitter and was like, "Yeah, I gave that guy too much cushion." I feel like he's gonna feel a lot of pressure on himself to make up for that. Yeah. And so I am. <laughs> I'm going to pass the mic to Aisha because I feel like she no, has more because, to say than I Because you said something really good earlier in the show about alignments. Oh, yeah. He couldn't make that play from that alignment. Mm-hmm. That, that's uh, true. That's uh, a fantastic and, and, point. And if you can't, the fact that he was close lets you know mm-hmm. he, his athleticism is through the roof. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just going to go. That's I, all I got to say. Agree. Like you, He probably he kicking himself yeah. kind of, but, but he know what's up. Yeah. So, but yeah. I agree with you though. I was just saying you made a good point earlier in the show about alignments. No, and, and I mean I I didn't make that specific point, but I said like something similar in so many words on Twitter where I was just I was hoping that he wasn't putting it all on himself. Yeah. And he might be, but he just seems like the type of player to be like I have to make up for that, and I feel like he will spend four quarters trying to make up for that, and he will do everything in yeah. his power to make Malik Neighbors' life hell. Mm. And he so. like picking. He like yeah. picking. And plus, it seems though. like they have some like personal beef going on. A little oh, bit. Yeah. Lord. Just a little. It's friendly. Yeah. 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 You know. I'm going to go Trey. Yes. And, and piggybacking off of that, too, I just feel like the last three weeks he's been frustrated with with how the defense has played as a whole. But the, the kind of person Trey is is he's a perfectionist. Like, to the fullest extent of a perfectionist, it is Trayvon Diggs. Like, he is his worst critic. He's so hard on himself. Um, and so I feel like these last three weeks, especially – when you're coming back, Deron Bland goes down. You don't have that. You're that guy. You've always been that guy, but you're <laughs> turning back from injury. You're kind of chomping at the bit to get back. Production hasn't been great to where you don't get your opportunities. Could have your opportunities now if your run defense does what they need to do. I'm going to go Trey. I'm going to give this one to Trey because Trey Trey deserves it. I'm going to give it to Trey, and maybe I'm being a little homer with that answer, but honestly, like, there's nothing I want more than Trayvon Diggs to set that tone and be like, look, we're kicking some A today. Like, we're not taking this anymore. Yeah, I'm going to go with Trayvon Diggs, and it's mostly because of the inaccuracy of Daniel Jones. But then also, too, I I will say that there are plenty (laughs) of times we're not going to see Trayvon on him, Mm -hmm. on – what is this neighbors, Malik. Neighbors. Malik neighbors. Oh my God. Because they are moving him around. Yeah. They're trying to find favorable matchups with him. That's yeah. why he's, you know, playing the way that he's playing. So, do you think he'll be more my, uh, well, presumably if Kalen Carson's not in? Oh, they're going to put him on. And, but I think that Jalen Hyatt is like, they might try to take advantage of just throwing the ball downfield. Mm-hmm. I mean, just. Honestly, just because Booth has struggled with that, they're probably gonna catch wind today. Mm-hmm. They may not be able to change. No, they might not. They, but they might have been able. They might have been going at like Car- Kaylin Carson from the start. But like, yeah, they they have their game plan in place now. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Trayvon Diggs. But what things Trayvon's gonna have to do is lay tackle. Um, because this Malik Neighbors guy can do a lot with the rock in his hands and the yak ability and things he can do after the catch. So, yeah, I'll go with Trayvon Diggs. All right, real fast, ladies, before we wrap things up. I know Aisha. Gave her uh, score prediction yesterday. Oh, What's y'all's score no. Yeah, I'm not doing it again. No. What'd you say? <laughs> Mine was 21-17 Giants. I don't remember oh, what no. I said. Mm. I don't want the Giants to win. That's not what I was saying, but I think. Oh, you're doing that thing where you're like, yeah. if I root for the opponent, uh-huh. it's reverse games. psychology. Yeah, but I like also, it. too, y'all, See what like. doing there? <laughs> <laughs> the same way that people, yeah. the same way that people are like, we like it's just the Giants. Oh. But mm-hmm. hey, with respect, people could be like, 
It's just the Cowboys right yeah. now. Yeah. Real talk. What you got? Um, I don't know. I know. I've been debating how I feel about the the final outcome because I just I have a feeling like Daniel Jones is just gonna try to he's he's gonna try to run a lot. So far this year, he's got like the fourth most uh, yards from quarterback carries out of all the QBs in the NFL. Um, he's actually not playing as bad as people want to give him he's credit not. for. Yeah, he and given what he's working <gasps> with, he's not. I feel like with he's him not, with him feeling himself that. and what he can do with his feet this season, he's gonna be like, man, these dudes they're not tackling well, they're not stopping to run anyway. I'm a I'm a RPO them to death. Um, I would love to see him try. <laughs> he's that's, not- that's the second scariest thing, by the way, <laughs> about the Giants. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna still say seventeen. Okay. 17-10. Well, not, it's a rain I'm game, not, but it's also a rain game. Oh, I'm going to say so. this. I'm not confident. I'm not confident. I'm not, I'm not confident, but I am hopeful. I'm oh, hopeful. Oh, look, we're over time. I don't have to give a score prediction. No, yeah, you do. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> we got time. Mm-hmm. Yep, we do. We're going to stay over <laughs> until you give me this score prediction. Go ahead. <laughs> what you got? What you got? Oh, okay. I'm going to say 20-23. Ooh. That's what I don't know. F word. <laughs> <laughs> and I amaze as bad. <laughs> well, I say that because Somebody. on a short week after the last two be, weeks, be it's up. just so. It's just. i will be tired. I I want them to pull it out of themselves to be like, look, here's my fight. We win this game. Let's yeah. move on. Kind of start to change the narrative, but that's really hard to do on a regular week. It's not going to be solved in a regular week, much less. A short week. Mm. Um, you know what? I'm gonna give it to the Cowboys. I'm gonna okay. give it to the Cowboys, and I'm I'm really hoping I don't regret that. No, no, on I Friday, mean, I, yeah. I I picked them too, but I, hey, I'm, I'm I want them to turn things around. I cannot believe this is happening I to want, us. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe we're actually like going there questioning here, like, and doubting. Can we beat the Giants? Yeah. Be the Giants right now? We are. I don't know. This is sick. We are shaking in our boots. Hopefully, our rain boots. This they is prove sick. everybody wrong. <laughs> and hopefully, the Cowboys come back with a win on Friday because, oh. whoo, baby, if they don't, we're not even going to think about that. We're going to have a lot of fun on Friday. Yes. No are matter we? what. No matter yeah, what. Yeah, y'all have fun. Look. I have an extra session with my therapist. Please you might want to. You might want to schedule that now, yeah. just in case. They yeah. stressing me. Yeah. It's all right. Well, this was a lot of fun, ladies. Bless. Y'all will be back here on Friday. We and will. I will be back here on Monday you with will. y'all ladies. So. And I will be back here on Wednesday. <laughs> yes. Cowboy Nation, make sure to tune in on Friday at 3 so p.m. Well. Girls Talk, Boys Talk will be back here in the SWBC studio. Bye. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!